All right, guys, we got another video here. This is a 2011 Mini Cooper S. Customer complaint is the chicken and light is on. So I got already the scanner connected. <clears throat> Let's ID the vehicle and see what we got here. I'm gonna first set up the ignition. Let me set up the. For this one, I'm going to use the Maxxis Elite. Hopefully. Recording is good, I think so. Okay, so we got the ignition on. We're gonna auto detect the vehicle. That is the correct V number. So, this is a Mini R56, it's a N18, which means it's a turbo engine GDI system. Close the window on the driver's side so we don't have we don't get uh, much noise because I'm not using an external microphone, I'm just using the camera microphone. Hopefully it's good. And we're gonna go to diagnosis and then control unit drive into DME. Let's read the codes and see what we got. Well, we got two EE2 not present combustion misfire several cylinders damaging exhaust gas after a star sequence. And then the two EEC again not present, which is uh, the same thing but on cylinder number three. Uh, we got the two EFE combustion misfire several cylinders uh, several cylinders. That's like a P0300 on in anything else. And then we had the 2F01 combustion misfire cylinder 3 det detected. So it's kind of like the same thing, different code uh, numbers. Uh, we got a freeze frame. Let's see if we can check that out. Um, let's check this one first and see what we can see. Well, uh, keep on reading. Let's see if we have any important values in here. So this will be your uh, uh, generic code P0303. This is a very important fuel rail pressure. Well, that's the absolute pressure. It's not the actual or well, it says actual value. So this is okay. And 1600 uh, RPMs, 1200 psi. That's that's good. So. At least this is not a, a low pressure problem. Remember, this is a GDI system. Filter real pressure, actual value. That's also, you know, remember this is a turbo engine. So that's, that was, uh, was this, was this, this was the first one? Let me see. No, that, that's the P0300. So as this is a generic, again, information on that first one with the random misfire. We can see that the pressure is very steady, same RPMs. Let's check the other one. Same P0300, but it has a different definition if you go over to the um, OEM number. We can check that. Remember, we have the OEM information for this car too. It was just coming off. It's no good it doesn't record the temperature where when this was happening. It tells me the load, kilometer, frequency three times, but it doesn't tell me the actual um, temperature or nothing on this rest frame, so not much help in here. If we go here, let's see, I'm just looking for that temperature to see if the actual um, car was hot or just, you know, come, you know, just starting. Total bottle angle referred to lower stub. This is a very high acceleration. That is weird. Maybe he tried to like you know accelerate the, the vehicle to see if the misfire goes away, but I mean I'm just thinking on that. Time after end to start. 
all right that's not much information in there so let's go back to live data let's start the car and see what we feel all right, so the car is running in idle um, we have the check engine light on obviously we have the coach in there I don't feel any misfires so let's see right here in the misfire detection and yes definitely we have no no misfire being detected so this is probably happened when the engine is cold that's the counters uh, there is no history here so nothing that we can use um, this is usually the smoothness is going to give kind of like both you know uh, it can be injector related or uh, ignition related and it will change the values in here this is like the misfire counters for that so I guess this is what you're looking for uh, it has to be very close one to another we can see the cylinder one and uh, sorry two and three they got like a one point something and then cylinder one and four are in 0 0.2 to 0 but still it's not a huge amount and this is based on revolutions on time we can accelerate the car I'm going to raise it up to like a 3000 rpm to see what we see there 2500 very smooth so what we what I think I'm going to have to do with you guys in here too is uh, just save this information look at the values that we have you know on almost 3000 rpm 2800 rpms and then into idle on those smooth uh, smoothness values we saw that the uh, misfire detection is not changing let's see what we have in motor operation values uh, yeah not much in here either this uh, is the downstream pressure sensor and the upstream uh, pressure sensor for the turbo these gotta be very close to each other so like a, a hundred ex, uh, uh, hectopascals of difference is considered normal alright so that's an idle I'm going to come into like a 3000 rpm to see that math value the mass sensor so we got like 26 steady remember this is a steady acceleration I don't feel any any misfires you can see the engine is completely warm 198 the voltage is good so I'm just doing this as my own record and for you guys to see what a normal vehicle values are and then we can we're gonna have to check this vehicle tomorrow call or later on I'm gonna do a very quick snap throttle to see the value on that uh, on that mouth let me actually yeah, we can probably use that. The thing with that is it doesn't really give me it says like 40.4. That should be not not really enough. So let's go back to here and pick up uh, a gauge. See if we can see that better. But yeah, this one will give us the minimum and maximum. Right now it's reading 8.3 three uh, kilogram hour oh, actually I'm, I'm wrong I was thinking on grams per second so 40.4 might be good we have to do the conversion I will uh, do that in a second let's do one more time sorry I hit the the, um, the brake pedal but you can see right now that we see 118 one more time 240 so that is don't ever do that in a very cold engine because uh, it's no good but we have so 240.7 that is better so you saw that the graph on on hotels is not really that accurate I don't like that to check the oxygen sensors and so the snap on is very good and that I can give that to them it's very very clean uh, looking graphics so you can uh, really trust that information a little better
because if we go over to the graphic in here we can put that into another um, pr perspective so right now again we're reading seven point something let's see if this catches the, the snap throttle and where is it <laughs> uh, now it comes well that's not so bad definitely not so bad a little delay on when showing on the scanner one more time as you can see I already released the gas and the numbers are like in there but yeah well that, that worked out so not so bad then disregard what I just said about the the graphics so let's go back out here so the battery voltage is good our cooling temperature is good uh, those are just remember for our records what else we would like to see let's see the, the fuel pressure so we got the nominal value and then we have the rail pressure value going to accelerate the car to 3000 rpms that's around 2900 or so so you can see that 1420 hopefully you guys can see that value well And it's staying very good. Now we go to idle. It's around a thousand psi, right? Yep. So that's the high pressure. We can go back and check the low pressure. Just gonna be just one reading. So we got 72.52 psi. I don't see that changing at all. I guess that's just one value it's a little weird that we have to like select different uh, menus for pits uh, what is in fuel system duty cycle quantity control valve status of an electric fuel pump fuel level 6.8 gallons which is like half a tank I'm referring to this in here all right so let's see an acceleration that one of the control is going to change I'm going to 2000 2500 2900 I'm just trying to go slow to see the different values it looks like it stabilizes in 25 something temperature is 170 degrees we got a very warm engine no misfires still okay let's check the oxygen sensor values and that's after and well we just got voltage so let's let's select actually let's graph this It's a wideband O2 sensor, so we're not expecting to have much of a switching on a wideband sensor. Hopefully, the recording is being clear. clear. It's no lean or rich condition, so this is a steady value. That's what you're looking for. So, if we accelerate. snap throttle you can see on the downstreams it's kind of weird so oh, oxygen sensor after cattle converter oxygen sensor after cattle converter ADC tension those two bodies are the same so if we accelerate this slowly you cut off you see the it's a little delay there the, the, the graphic to actually interpret in here interpret the, the values so let's just take that as a, as a sample I did like a 3000 uh, snap in there too and that's it it's no more information here 
So again, I'm going to talk to the customer and tell them that we need to uh, check this vehicle when it's uh, cold. in Because uh, it's not it's firing right now. I don't like to, um, you know, marry myself with a problem that is not happening. I don't like to spend time. I like to record information as I did now with a good running, ve a good running vehicle. And then compare those values uh, with the car actually pr uh, giving me the, the problem which again I don't feel now so I'm going to stop this recording and then come back when the car is uh, acting alright guys uh, this is uh, back into the Mini Cooper we have um, or I have the car now doing the misfire so I went ahead and I, got, I set up the Picoscope with like the secondary with, in this car you can do primary uh, ignition as well I just uh, pick up the secondary because I want to see that glitch that I got on my computer or a screen going on and off with the secondary so I wanted to test it like that but again this is a personal preference so I'm going to turn this on that is the multiplex from Picoscope I have the scan I mean the computer ready to go let's open up Picoscope software Well, this one is loading, which I'm going to take that much. I also got the scanner connected to the car. The ignition is on, car is off. Just wanted to uh, um, all right, that's the vehicle. Hopefully you guys can see a little bit better in there. And now it's established communication. Yeah, and the ignition is on. I started for like three seconds and I felt the, the um, misfire and I wanted to have everything ready so I turned it off, didn't let it warm up because this is something that's happening only when it's cold so let's read the codes as, as uh, in the beginning we had this one so what I'm going to do I already got this information and everything so I'm going to erase it because I want to make sure that we get fresh codes when this happens all right so let's go to live data and uh, let's just pick up the misfire detection all right so now the car is off let's go back to the scope all right so let's stop this and uh, we're gonna have two channels on this one again with the multiplex I can read all the four ignition coils or the four cylinders in one channel so let's set up uh, channel one we're gonna pick up secondary positive I think yeah I'm pretty sure it was and we're gonna do the same thing in channel B let's just pick up uh, secondary positive if we see that for some reason is inverted we can always you know come back and, and reset this I'm going to set it up from minus 5 to 20 kilo uh, kilo volts and let's run this uh, let's check the time let's just stop this one second I'm going to increase the sample rate to 2 mega samples which is enough and we're going to increase the time so like 500 milliseconds per division which is huge so we're going we should have a lot of recording like this way so we're going to go inside the vehicle and start a car this is automatic so you can probably no i think i gotta press the pedal so definitely misfire 100% in number three. Hopefully you guys can see that. And it was very, very quick. I hope, yeah, my scanner is recording very good. Let me stop this and turn the car off. I don't want, again, the car to get too warm. Let me set the ignition back on. 
So we saw on the misfire uh, counters that it's on cylinder three, as far as you know what the scanner can read. So now let's go back into the capture. Let me guys, let me set you guys into the tripod, so I can use both of my hands on the computer. Sorry for the shaking. Okay, that's much better. Let me see what I see. Oh. Let's see what we see. It's so, all right. By having this much uh, timing, we know that we can go back and, and check everything. Looks like, yeah, it's actually backwards. Mm. Still, let's see if we can zoom in and see what we can see here. So the red channel will be our sink, and this order, or the fire and order is one, three, four, two, and we can definitely see a, a big issue, not only in, this, in the number three, one, three, four, two, so ch both uh, three and two looks like they're misfiring. It's very, very quick. So let's see if we can, I'm going to save this data because I might be able to flip this image around later so let me save this uh, we don't have this as a selected yet yet and then let's go over to mini all right we got mini cooper s we this oops sorry guys <laughs> almost Grab the camera. So this is a two, uh, 2011. Transmission is automatic. Test condition. Um, key on engine running. Idle. Correct. And do we need anything? I mean, it's a four cylinder. This will be. Let's see if we can have uh, anything like. For this, uh, for tag this channel, ignition coil, secondary voltage. No, it's not ignition coil. Well, actually, it is. Let's just name it like that, and we're going to put all cylinders, all seal, one, one ch channel. And then we're going to select the same thing. This is just for tagging, so I can remember what I was doing. And if I share this, people can interpret it better. I'm not going to, I'm not sure if I'm going to do that with an inverted signal, but we'll see. And then this will be a sync on number one, so on cylinder one. And we can say that. So let's take this. I like the way uh, the file tries to try to be just tries to be safe. And we're gonna have secondary ignition all. All right, that's now a safe. Now we can go here and then go to negative. Do the same thing on channel B. All right, so we can. Uh, well, the way I was looking down, we can drop this to like probably 520 instead of 550 to get a, a bigger waveform. Time wise, I think I'm happy for, with what we saw there. Hopefully the car will misfire again. Let me set up the scanner in there too. Not sure if it's going to be easy for you guys to see it here or not, but it will be for me. I can have everything in here. So I just put the scanner in there, but I know it's just too small for one screen. So 
So as you saw, it's very, very just the first start. It seems like it was disappearing in like five seconds. So here we go again. Yeah, I don't feel much misfire now. Ah, we're not even recording. Yeah, right now it's for me. See if I have to refresh this. The scanner is not even picking it up no more either. Guys, I'm gonna tell you, this is like five seconds. So I turned the car off. We're gonna leave the ignition off no matter what, we don't need the scanner. And that is a stop capture. Sorry, I have to set you guys a little bit on the side, but I need to see this too. So we got three frames with enough information. All right, let's uh, zoom and see if I, at least in the start we got anything. Can put this on the side here. Let's sink into a 720 event. Let's bring this one up. So this will be cylinder number one, number three, number four, and number two. But still we got something going on. As per all the education and classes I have taken, you know, and experience, when you have something like this, let me zoom into cylinder number three. This is the spark, uh, uh, sorry, the burn time line. Whatever you have, something that shows from here to the left is external to the cylinder and from the middle to the right will be internal in the cylinder. So this looks like a shorted uh, coil or secondary, let's say, you know, it can be a shorted coil, it can be the spark plug too, even though the spark plug is inside the cylinder, but it might be, you know, jumping in the spark plug itself. So let's zoom out a little bit. So we can go back into the 720. Okay, let's remember I didn't put them in trigger or nothing here. So this is this is the same first frame. That's the nice thing about having all the cylinders in one capture. Like if I go back out, this is just one frame. By having 500 milliseconds per division, so we have five seconds capture, and we have all this events in one frame which I love because this is the way in why Pico is so amazing forget about a snap and you will never be able to do something like this all right so let's uh, zoom again into the first part let's go a little bit forward like right here and still we can see that even the demise fire has kind of like disappear on the counters we'll still see it on on the coils look at this this is this is definitely not not not, not nice we can zoom into more definitely number 3 and number 2 are the ones that are giving weird readings can put the sink down now that we know this is number one and this is number one again so one three four two if we see the even the burn time kind of like it's very high you know compared to here I don't like even number one let's go let's go to the next screen we're now on the second screen. I'm going to pick up, you know, something in the middle. Yeah, number three is definitely, definitely the issue. We can see it here. Where number two is kind of like normal looking. But number three is, is, is up high. But so we have an issue here either with a coil. 
or we have a spark plug issue. So let's see this again. It's a very weird looking form, huh? Trying to find the best one for us to see. And I see about here now that we can just scroll back. Yeah, we can see now here again number three. We have number three here, number three here. Always number three. Number one is not producing any issues. So a quick and dirty thing that we can do here. And it's a valid test. We can either swap the coils or swap the, the spark plugs. I have removed anything. So let me stop the video. I'm going to swap the coil first and then we restart the car. Actually, before we go there, let me go to the end capture to see how is this at the end with the car not producing misfire, at least on the scanner. And I didn't feel anything. But that doesn't mean this, uh, the oscilloscope ain't picking it up. And it's definitely still there. As you can see, one is okay and four is okay. Three and two are not, not definitely looking good. All right, so I'm going to swap just the number three and number one to see if this weird looking thing moves into one. All right, so let me stop the video, guys. All right, swap the coils, which is super quick, especially that I have a mount. And you know, and the Mini Coopers are very, very easy. So let's, let's actually, before I do this, let me save this information. Because this is, I don't have to revert anything. Same information. And we can put this again. Sorry for taking the time to do this, but it's part of it, right? So, 2011. Secondary. Secondary, we can all no miss fire. And, but we still know that it's there. So, with this kind of time that I have right now, I can uh, start the recording and let me go and start the car. I know I'm going to lose a couple of frames just on this, but now we got three frames, I'm going to go over pretty much to the end of the four. I'm going to stop this. Let me turn off the vehicle. Now let's see what we see. Let's go over to the second one. Pretty much this is where the car starts, obviously. And let's do a zoom in here. Kind of like where the car stabilizes. Hmm. So we swap the coil and still number one is looks very clean. Let's go a little forward. Compared to number three, look. So we still got the issue on number three, one, three, four, two. We don't see any other change, right? Still number two is still weird too as well. But right now there is no misfire, so even this way, the car is not misfire. So let's go to the third one. Yep, definitely number three and number two. One, three, four, two. This is a weird looking form. So let's uh, now swap the coil. Again, one second. So I want to show you guys what I'm doing. So this is spark plugs number three. Hopefully that shows well on the camera. 
It's definitely a platinum, but one thing I didn't like is a denso iridium. I mean, it's, a, it's not so bad because iridium, but I mean, denso, a mini Cooper, you have to have a, either original BMW or NJK, which is what actually I think BMW is using. So. This, uh, this is cylinder number three. I gotta put in, num in the piston number one or cylinder number one. And uh, this is the spark plug for cylinder one, which doesn't look much different. They're very black. I'm trying to do as quick as possible all this test. I don't wanna you know, heat the engine too much. Got my leads close to the turbo. Still not too hot. <clears throat> Weather is a little crazy lately. What's looking at it? Come on, let it go. What's looking at the Weather Channel and it's supposed to snow on Sunday or Saturday? We have like 70 degrees a couple of days ago. All right, so and what I was trying to say is, with this weather, it's cold. So the car gets cold very quick. I can see through, you know, the hole and the piston leaks at least looks uh, dry. We have no coolant or oil. thing is when you have a, a misfire that goes away for you know five seconds it's very hard to to call a coil or a spark plug just out of the blue like that I mean so funny that or so hard that it can work I need to get that out well It's funny that you know how a spark plug can work good for five seconds and then go bad, right? I need to plug that in there. These leads are a little hard to put. Okay, that one click. That's what I was looking for. All right, let's go back to the scope. Now that's a step capture of what we had before. So let's uh, let's go back. Actually, let me stop this one second, guys, because this has a zoom in. We don't want to zoom in not yet. All right, let's go start the vehicle again. I don't feel a misfire. Again, you know, it's just super quick, five seconds and goes away. I was lucky to at least feel it. All right, something is, oh, I forgot to turn this on. My mistake, so let's just stop this and redo it. I turned the multiplex off. So let's get like a, I think that's plenty. Let's turn the vehicle off again. And now let's do a zoom. Let's go back to the first one. And we're going to pick up 720 here. Okay, it looks like it's a, it's a spark plug. It's definitely funny, huh? I'm blue. Look at right now on number three. It's definitely not a, be a beautiful looking signal, but now let's do like this so we can see better. We can definitely see now that uh, number uh, one is being affected. Uh, trying to get this. So, yep, look at right here. Yep. 
Now number three looks good. This is number three. And number one is that humble or what a spark plug can do. We can definitely see that. I mean, definitely. <laughs> it's a weird looking thing on number three now, but you know, probably the cylinder, the car is trying to adjust the mixture again from a running better. Remember, you know, the BMW has a smooth, a smoothness uh, hit. So the computer trying to compensate with the oxygen sensors and everything while the car is running. So definitely a spark plug. So look at this. This is the, better, the best capture. No doubt about it. All right, so we need the spark plugs. But I'm going to recommend it from the dealer or get at least the NJK specifically for this car because I know it's their NJK. All right, guys, so this is so important for you to um, let me take my headlight off. Wanted to talk a little bit with you guys too. So what I was going to say is uh, this is the importance of uh, taking your time because getting a car that is completely warm up, it's not reacting. You have yeah, a customer complaining about you know checking in line. You can see there is a misfire on cylinder three, at least on on that. Uh, code that we had before and uh, also a random inspire so we have an injector issue we have a coil issue a spark plug issue boot issue and this is the easiest way yeah sometimes it's not the best uh, scientific way to do it let's say for for you know to say something but I have a mechanic this is a shop I cannot spend you know three hours on trying to see you know how the waveform looks and everything I am very familiar with this and I knew that it was this was the spark plug more than anything but I wanted to show you too I mean what is wrong about you know swapping coils especially when you are you know having this easy access to it yes I know that if the coils are under a, an intake then get yourself familiar with testing it when a car is having an issue like this it might help you later on when you cannot remove the coils or the spark plugs right so yeah, it makes sense but again as this is a chop I gotta do it as quick as possible so I just did it quick and dirty remove the coils I mean swap the coils swap the spark plugs that's it so I hope you guys like the video and don't forget to subscribe I'm just going to order the coil I mean the, the spark plugs and and that's it all right have a good day thank you so much